Everybody. Welcome to the Going Hard Podcast. I'm your host, Josh DeLay. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm entirely by myself. Uh, this is actually, I'm, uh, I'm recording this Easter morning. Um, PD, uh, is, is upstairs. Um, but he wasn't interested in doing this. And Alan and his lovely wife, Susan, are uh, in like Mar Largo or something? They're in uh, they're in uh, Florida. Hey, you guys want to hear my impression of Donald Trump? Let's see, let's see how the audience feels about my impression of uh of Donald Trump. You're a loser and you're fired. <laughs> All right, hot start, man. Hot start. So um. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in complete control today. Um, this probably won't be the longest episode you guys have ever had to endure before, but um, I, if there's one thing I'd like to stick by in this world is uh, a strict weekly schedule of the Going Hard podcast. It's what our fans have come to expect. Uh, more importantly, uh, I promised Alan while he was out of town that we would take care of this. And uh, so part of me wants to just keep my word, you know. And since Alan is... Uh, not only is he part of the podcast, let's just, I'll let you guys in on a little secret about Alan. Secondly, he's a pedophile. And what you don't want on your side is a, is a or not on your side, but you, what you don't want as an enemy is a pedophile because they're, they're ruthless people. But uh, thirdly, um, Alan could be a very brutal man. And I fear that if I break a promise to him, uh, many children won't be safe in this world. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know about Alan. Um, he, he'll probably, you know, he'll elucidate this further um, when he comes back next week. Alan's a, he's very open. He's always been very open on the podcast. That's why he makes such a good partner to bounce, you know, silly little ideas off of, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess just one last big major announcement. This podcast uh, will not feature Alan Wagner at all. All right. Well, I mean, I'm confused because I, I feel like the audience likes Alan. I think I think people kind of look at me like I'm the bully, you know, like I'm a, you know, I'm the steamroller on the podcast, you know, like Alan can't get an idea through sometimes because I just, you know, I just plow through him and, you know, ultimately I don't see why you guys care anyway. He's a, I mean, he's a pedophile, you know, so I don't know why, I don't know why you're like pretending that you, uh, well, whatever. I mean, look, everyone has their own thing. They have their own issues. You know, we're not going to get too deep into that. Um, hey, before I, uh, how about this though? Before I, uh, we, we we get into what we're doing here today, and I'll I'll lay it out for you guys uh, shortly. Want to hear a joke? All right, I thought I have a good joke today. Um, people used to make fun of me all the time for going down on ladies uh, at Applebee's, um, but I just say that that's just eating good in the neighborhood. All right, wow. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now because I don't get that kind of laughter from Alan usually. So that's uh, that's definitely nice. So we, as you guys know, usually the Going Hard podcast, we hit all the hard, hard-hitting issues. Um, we talk about our personal lives a little bit. There's only me here today. Um, and I don't really feel like talking about the issues because, uh, frankly, everyone seems to think that I'm racist when I do. And I'm, look... This podcast already has one known pedophile. We don't need to have a racist as well. Those are really the two worst things to be in America today as a racist and a pedophile. And if if, if we're going to have one of each on a podcast, it's really not worth listening to. And I and I like to think this is worth listening to. So we're not going to touch on the issues because apparently people, you know, can't understand nuance in today's day and age. You know, not my fault. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down a little trip down memory lane. We're going to talk mostly about my personal life. And we might find some, dig up a few things about Alan and Petey as well along the way. Um, this first thing I would like to show you guys, and as you know, I, I talk about doing stand-up comedy, you know, quite a bit. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm not a, I'm not a real, uh, I'm not a real student of comedy. I don't even really try that hard at it, and it's going nowhere. But I have been doing it for a long time, and I was able to unearth an old set from the days of Pittsburgh. That's right, uh, back in the year of 2014, year of our Lord. Uh, happy Easter, Jesus. Um, the year of our Lord, 2014. Um, I emerged as a young comic to watch in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's right, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, I had a really, I had a really a unique run there. You know, I, the, the, the whole world was ahead of me. Um, the grass was always green, both on my side and in the pastures that I was trotting towards. Now, obviously, things have gotten pretty derailed. Alcoholism, you know, obesity, you know, general reiteration has slowed my career as it were. But I would like to play for you guys uh, this clip um, of me doing stand-up damn near 10 years ago now in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope this podcast is worth anybody's time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with, without further ado, here is my set from July 22nd, 2014 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Joe, and meanwhile, she was on the tilt world blowing a carny. Oh, life's just strange like that, isn't it? Anyway, this next comedian is uh, new on the Pittsburgh circuit, and he's really blowing up, folks. Let's give a warm round of applause for Josh Dalia. Hey, what up, Jacobs? Yeah, what up? Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys use that, you guys use Jagoffs a lot around here. I noticed that. A lot of, a lot of Jagoffs in the room right now. That's a, that's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, the, the, the Jagoff, right? Yeah, uh, North Dakota, uh, we had a thing called Jagger Offs. Uh, so you can drink the most, most Jagger. Yeah, right. Yeah. This guy, this guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, wearing, wearing his Jagermeister shirt up here in the front row. Yeah. Uh, so how's it going? How's it going, Jagger Offs? Yeah, it's been a, been a pretty good week. I actually, uh, actually heard this girl this earlier this week say. Uh, I talk way too much to get kidnapped. Like, as if, uh, as if, like, some kidnappers would just let her go because, you know, she talked too much. And I thought that was funny because, uh, because, uh, usually, uh, when you get kidnapped, you know, they gag you. So that wouldn't really, uh, that wouldn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like, she's just in the back. It's like, yeah, we don't care. We're still going to rape you and throw you in a bunker and throw sand on top of you. Yeah, I talk too much to get kidnapped. That's just a real, real optimistic, real optimistic thing going on there. Very, very optimistic. Mm, indeed, yeah, very, very optimistic. But that's just, that's just funny. People are always just, like, thinking they're too good. You know what I mean? People are always thinking they're too good to, you know, get in cer certain situations. You know what I mean? It's like, uh... You know, like an, it's like an optimistic, like, uh, <laughs> you know, like an uh, like optimistic cancer patient. It's just like, oh, yeah, I'm totally going to make art, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is optimistic people. Yeah, so, hey, I'm, you know, I'm originally uh, not, not, from Pitt, not from Pittsburgh, you know, not an original jag off like, uh, <laughs> like most of you guys in the crowd here. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm actually uh, from, uh, from North Dakota originally. Uh, I don't know, though, you guys are very mountainous terrain. Um, yeah, where I come from, it's, it's real flat, uh, flat as a pancake, or uh, as you tell my hipster girlfriend, flat as a crepe. Yeah, that used to, that used to bother her. Uh, she used to say uh, that I was a creep um, in response to that. Um, yeah, very flat though. Uh, not a whole lot really going on there. Um, you guys got your, you guys got the Steelers. Um, you know, we have uh, fields of wheat. Uh, that's kind of what we do. We just go out, we spectate, you know, we bring some bleachers out there, you know, we, we watch it wave. Uh, yeah, weed actually does a killer wave. Um, it's constantly pretty much always doing a wave. Just, hey, woo, hey, woo, hey, woo. Just that, that amber wheat just flowing in the wind. Yeah, it's a little, definitely a lot, <laughs> a lot different in, uh, in North Dakota. Um, Hey, so look, I mentioned uh, earlier, in North Dakota, there's a lot of drinking there. Uh, definitely a lot of drinking going on there. So I used to do the Jagger, 
uh, the Jagger offs, uh, so you could drink the most Jagger. And uh, I don't know. I guess um, this is just kind of kind of like brought some funny up to, into into my head here, thinking about the, the Jagger. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've never like, you know, I'm not like really like hung like a horse or whatever. You know, got a big dick, but uh, I have been uh, hung over like a horse. You know, like a horse who. Uh, Got fed too much Jagger at 4 in the morning. Got a shitty owner, right? <laughs> like, a, like a post preakness party or something. He's got them running the big race. His owner's just putting it right in his trough. He's slurping it up. He doesn't know any better. He's a stupid horse and hung over. His ass is bleeding. <laughs> There's weird, weird, weird jockeys, right? There's weird jockeys doing weird shit. As, as if the jockeys take care of the horse, right? <laughs> yeah, as, as if as if that's as if that's how it works, right? Uh, definitely not. They have a uh, you know four people to come in and do that, right, guys? Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely uh, uh, much different in North Dakota. Uh, like I was saying, much much different. Um, yeah, I remember on the way uh, on the way to West Virginia, I kind of started to feel like maybe I was uh, you know Ryan Atwood from the OC. You guys you guys remember that show on Fox? Yeah, right. So on the way, and I was just like pulling over, pulling to the bridge, just going through Ohio into into West Virginia, where I'm currently residing. And I was just like, West Virginia, West Virginia, here it comes. Oh, because <laughs> remember that's how that song goes. Yeah, and I'm pretty much just like the guy from that show too, because I'm banging this really hot redheaded mom right now. She's all rich and shit. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Been pretty good living here in um, living here in West Virginia, living here in Pittsburgh. Definitely uh, plenty of so far. Uh, definitely some pretty late nights out at the out of the bar and uh, checking out some of the, lo- the local the local eatery. Uh, what's uh, what's up with uh, what's up with Tram's Kitchen on the corner there though, huh? You guys had you guys had the Tram's yet? Yeah, it's like uh, it's Thai cuisine. Get some Thai food. You know, you get your uh, get your pho. Or as I like to say, you, you get you get you get fucked on the pho. Uh Yeah, you get a you get a spring spring roll there. Yeah, they do a, they do an amazing fresh spring roll. But it's funny, Tram will bring it up in the kitchen, be like ching da ching da, and I'm just like, oh, Tram, take it easy. I just want the spring roll, not the ching <laughs> Uh She's a crazy lady, but uh, she does a really great job over there. And um, yeah, you, you guys should probably eat there if you want some great Thai Thai cuisine. <laughs> I don't know. That one got a trail off there. That's just a just like doing an advertisement up here on stage right now. Can you imagine that? Like, like just the comedian who would just like do advertisements. Like I'm just like telling a joke, and I'm like, and that's when I found out that my dick was only two inches long, and that joke was brought to you by Walmart. <laughs> Can you imagine just that? Just that. I guess you know at some point that, that does happen, but just uh, you know, just like uh, just like, and that's when I realized I had AIDS. <laughs> brought to you by blah 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 medical center. That would be so ironic, right? Because the medical center supporting a guy with, with AIDS. Might be some, uh, <laughs> uh, might be a, a little bit of conflict of interest in that one, right, guys? Jeez. Uh, yeah, so it's been good. Like I said, it's been good being here. I'm uh, actually uh, been working pretty hard, though. I did take a vacation. I went and roofed my grandpa's house in Wisconsin. Uh, that was a, that was pretty fun, actually. Um, it was funny, though. I don't really know a lot, a lot about roofing. I think that my you know, my grandpa and my dad uh, also knew that because I was I was taking these shingles off near electrical wires, and uh, at first my dad pointed up and said, "Hey, Josh, uh, those are electrical wires," and I was like, "Yeah, all right, you know, great." Uh, and then I was just like, "Yeah, I'm, whatever." And then my grandpa stopped me while I was doing it again. He's like, "Hey, do you, you know what those are?" And I was like, uh, "No, what, what are they, Grandpa?" And he was like, "Oh, those are electrical wires." I was like, "Oh, really?" And that's a hat on your head. <laughs> Yeah, he needs it. He's, he's balding. Yeah. So it was kind of like a, he might not have got it, but like it was like, oh yeah, Grandpa, you're old and I'm not kind of thing. Like I know what electrical or electricity, but uh, believe me, I totally get it. Well, it's kind of, <laughs> I'm not actually mean to my Grandpa like that. Can you, can you imagine that though? Just like, the, just like the comedian who like goes and roofs his Grandpa's house and it's just like mean to him the whole time. It's like, yeah, Grandpa, I'm not roofing your fucking house. You're old as shit. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I just got the I got the light back there. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I got the light back there. It's like uh, it's like Reggie's back there with the light. Guy, he's just like waving that thing like it's a like it's a lightsaber or like or like he's a flagger on like a like a shitty Ohio interstate. You know what I mean? 
He's like, oh no, go slow. Nope, now stop. I hate that, man. There's so much construction going on here in the summer. It's just ridiculous. Sometimes I just feel like, um, feel like, oh, we can't, can't you just like, you know, do that during the winter or something? <laughs> it would just be so much more convenient. Oh man, it'd be, it'd, wouldn't it be great? Like if there was just a guy who was like trying to do his summer job in the winter, like, uh, like for example, like if you're working on a construction crew or whatever, and like you're just out there and there's just like a foot of snow and you're just like laying down concrete on top of the snow and like. You're just fucking drunk, and your fucking foreman comes on. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing, Rob?" And Rob is like, "I'm just doing my job, man." But he's just totally wasted, and he fucking crashes the concrete machine into the side of the fucking mountain, and then he just spills out, and the concrete's just pouring on top of him, and his foreman is trying to pull him out, and they both get stuck, and they just drown to death. Oh man, that got real dark real fast. I guess there could have been a better example for that, but yeah, you know, whatever. All right, guys, so like I said, I got the light there. Uh, Reggie's back there. He's, uh, he's waving it around. Uh, so I guess here's my, uh, here's my big close here, guys. Here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the bitter end, all right? So uh, I went into a, went into a, a pond. I've got to sell my Xbox because <laughs> got to make room for the Xbox One, you know what I mean? Right? Right? Yeah. And so um, and uh, I got to get the Xbox. The Xbox One, and uh, so I was going into the, going into a pawn shop, and um, and I, on the sign it said it was closed, but it was only it was like 3:35 or something, and um, I was like, man, I cannot believe it's closed. It was only 3:35, and then I realized, oh shit, it's Sunday, and I'm on the edge of the Bible Belt. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, guys. Get up your house. Thank you very much. You guys were great. Yeah, give it up. All right, so that was exclusive material there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're not going to hear that anywhere else uh, except for actually on the Going Hard podcast. Uh, that was me doing stand-up from 2014. And, you know, I really reminisce about those days living in... Uh, I was actually, as you could hear in that set, I, was, I wasn't very clear. That's the thing now. You know, eight years later, I'm much more concise on stage. It's much more coherent. Uh, however, uh, during those days... Um, I didn't really know what was going on. I was actually living in West Virginia, um, and uh, I was doing, I was doing a lot of opioids, you know, like just kind of as you do. Um, and I remember uh, we had a neighbor who uh, who came over to our house and wanted to hook his uh, uh, hook his water up to our sink so we could have water in his house. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why that's funny. I mean, I guess if you guys think poverty is funny, uh, I don't. I don't personally think it's funny. I think it was actually kind of sad, you know. And he was a good guy. Um, I did find out later though that he uh, did overdose on uh, methadone. <laughs> all right, hey, all right. Come on now, lit- enough. All right. You know what I mean? I mean, how many poor, heroin addicted? West Virginians, do I have to see floating in the Ohio River before you guys understand that this is no fucking joking matter? Why is that funny? I don't, look, I don't think that deserved a, 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 a laughter, you know, much less than a goddamn applause break. I'm actually trying to talk to you about a very serious issue. Um... There's a lot of problems, you know, uh, in the in the in the Rust Belt, as they call it, you know, and those those are the states where, you know, I, I know I said I wasn't gonna get political here, but those are the states where these politicians they go in there, and they promise these these folks that they're going to get their jobs back, you know, they make promises, they write checks that they simply cannot cash, and then these people, you know, they they flip flop between red and blue oftentimes because they just keep getting fucked over by, you know, the other politician, you know. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. They go into the Rust Belt and they try to convince these impoverished people, you know, that uh, it wasn't their fault that the jobs went away, even though almost assuredly they signed some legislature that made that happen. Oh, yeah. See, now you guys are laughing. What? So it's not funny to, to actually get serious and start talking about the political issues in our country. But God forbid I talk about, you know, a man slumped over on oxycodone. <laughs> I didn't even finish my sentence that time. Uh, I don't know. This is... This is just an abuse. 
All right, enough. All right, enough. 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 Jesus, man. I don't know what's so funny about the opioid crisis. I mean, personally, I, I, I find it repulsive um, what's happening in this country. And, and the same politicians who are waltzing in to the goddamn Rust Belt, you know, in their fancy limousines, their nicely coiffed hair, Armani suits, Russian brides, those guys, those same exact guys, are also perpetuating this opioid crisis, doing nothing to help the poor folks who are suffering from this. You know, it just makes me, it just makes me sick. See, now you see, once again, that's no laughing matter, is it? But of course, of course, I bring up the cold, dead opioid addict who I poked on a park bench. <laughs> and that's, okay, now that's not, come on. Now. I don't, I don't get why this is funny to you. This is more serious than politics. Politics is fake. Politics isn't even real. Politics isn't even real. That, that's what you should laugh at. The real shit that I'm fucking telling you about these goddamn piece of shit politicians, that's the shit you guys should be laughing about. You should be laughing at them, and then you should be Pokemon going to the polls to get those fuckers out of office. Because it's about goddamn time somebody does. Just makes me... It makes me just... I mean, it just makes me ill. It really just... It irks me to my core. The, the way these politicians treat these people. Alright, well now that you guys are done with your goddamn laugh attack. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, I, get, I did say that I would have some information about Alan and possibly Petey. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. You know? But what I will say is that a few episodes ago... Um, I did... Well, 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 we're going back into the archives of my stand-up. Um, I did, uh, I did kind of mention to Alan that I went on stage and pretended to be a Nazi. Now, what's important to remember here is that I was pretending to be a Nazi. There's nothing funny about the Nazis. There's nothing funny about piles and piles and piles of dead Jewish people. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you serious? All right. Yes, I should have. I I fucking I walked right into that one. You know what? At a certain point, you can't blame the audience. You have to blame yourself. Anyway, there is nothing funny about what happened back in the early '40s in Eastern Europe. Okay, there's just nothing funny about that. And uh, that wasn't the point of 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 my uh, my comedy set. I look. I'm a guy who is very progressive. Um, for example, I don't believe in punching down. You know what I mean? Um, unless I'm throwing a fist into a midget. Oh, nothing? Nothing, nothing for that. I mean, it was insensitive. You know, but not as insensitive as, you know, making jokes at the expense of the buckets of fillings and everything. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right. All right, look, at a certain point, you just it's the, the bit stops even being funny, you know what I mean? There's nothing funny about repeatedly saying horrific things and having a laugh track. Okay, I said there's nothing funny about that. All right, enough, enough, all right? I, I don't find any of this amusing at all, all right? I don't find it amusing even, even in the slightest, all right? So with that being said, Alan was very interested to hear my set where I pretended to be one of those soldiers who fought on the wrong side of World War II. Now, again, I don't stand by this, and I will once again uh, say that I was very drunk, and that I don't like to I don't, I don't like to spread this kind of rhetoric around. You know, I like to I like to be on the right side of history. You know, I don't like to be on the losing side of history like these fucking these pieces of shit were. You and you know who I'm speaking of. I'm, I'm afraid to even say their names because God knows you guys will go into a frenzy. Um, so this is this is my treat to Alan, who I know m listens to this podcast, even though he also makes them. Um, so, th so Alan, I know I said I'd never play this, but I, the last couple times that Alan hasn't been on the podcast, we've kind of lambasted him and uh, slandered him. Um, and have kind of, uh, well, just generally defamed him, I guess. Um, so instead of doing that this time, 
I'm actually gonna give him a gift, and and the gift is I'm gonna play my, I'm gonna play my Nazi set. Um, it's not gonna be very funny. Uh, it's not gonna be like that that set you just heard from. By the way, how hard did that kill in Pittsburgh? Like, did you guys hear that fucking crowd? What did I, like honestly, you guys are a great crowd. Like, truly, you laugh at the wrong times, but you're a really good crowd. Um, but that crowd in Pittsburgh was fucking hot. That's what you call a hot crowd. Tough room, more like easy room. Easy like your moms, all of your moms. Nothing? I mean, Jesus, man. All right, well, apparently when I actually try to be funny, it's not funny, and I don't know. You guys are all just racist, and that's just what I have to deal with. Um, uh, you know, why wouldn't you know why wouldn't our fans be racist? I mean, Alan's a racist, so why wouldn't you guys? I'm just kidding. Alan isn't racist. We're not defaming him. Um, so anyway... Without further ado, here is my Nazi set that I'm not proud of in any way, shape, or form. I guess try to enjoy it. Keep it going for Corey, you guys. I retired Nazi. I mean, let's just... <laughs> Not, I'm not active. I did three tours, and uh, it's 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 gut wrenching work. You know, let's just call it what it is. All right, it really weighs on a guy. And then like the whole like third tour, where I had to flee to South America and like hide. That wasn't fun. You know what I mean? The the best part. I'll cut you on the ground floor. The best part of being a Nazi was the first few years of it. We were a well-oiled machine, but the last three or four, and I'm fucking running through the jungle and hiding from bounty hunters and shit. I mean, that was not a good time, man. And look, I know no one wants to have empathy for a Nazi. That I get it. But you have to understand, living in the jungle is hard for anyone, man. It doesn't matter when you're off the brush. You know? It doesn't matter what war crimes you've committed or petty white coat. It doesn't matter what you do. The fact is when you're out surviving on salamanders, you have to have sympathy for a guy. And plus, I was just following orders, right? I mean, look, hey, I know. Look, it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. But hey, if you go to work and your boss is like, hey, we need you to work an extra five hours this week, what do you say? Anyone in the office? Yeah. What? Yes. Uh, if your boss says, hey, we need you to work overtime, what do you say, sir? Fuck yeah. Exactly. That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even that Hitler was persuaded. He was just my boss. You know? Like, everyone's like, oh, he must have this great oratory. It's like, no, no, he paid my bills. You know, I had kids back. Anyway, should we talk about something else? Uh, <laughs> two minutes on trying to make you guys laugh about me being an actual Nazi was pretty tough. <laughs> Almost as hard as living <laughs> in the jungles of Santa Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Almost as hard as that. You guys don't even know what the fucking Argentina winners are like. You have no idea. Because you're not Nazis. And honestly, I feel bad for everyone who has never been a Nazi. Who doesn't get to understand how I actually feel? You know what I mean? I just want to be like, all right, god damn, how is there any recovery from this? There's just zero recovery from this now. Uh, I'm getting older, anyone else? I'm getting older, man. Uh, I'm getting older, I, think, I feel like I'm turning to my dad. Because uh, I don't want to sleep with my mom. <laughs> I mean, I guess I've always been my dad. You know? <laughs> it was like I hit puberty and I was like, oh, gross. You know? uh, side note, my dad, also a Nazi. One of the new age ones. He just loves for Trump. You know? <laughs> He's not, my dad's a, one of those fake Nazis. He's not a guy who actually put in the work like I did. Um, <laughs> Why would I do that? You know what I mean? I just got you guys to laugh a little bit on a real joke, and then I just go right back into the goddamn Third Reich material. And uh, it's just not a good idea, you know? Fuck, dude. 
So Hitler, huh? <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb right now and say that of all my dictators, all the dictators who have ever existed, my least favorite was Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Go ahead and clap, it's fine. Go ahead and clap. I'll also say right now, and guys, I don't look, I don't know if you guys are, uh, I don't know if you guys like listen to the news or watch the news or whatever, but uh, I'm going to say this right now that uh, uh, I am actually starting a GoFundMe. Um, for uh, Putin and Russia, uh, for the brutalization that the Ukraine is putting them through right now. Um, and it's actually more of a GoFundMe, you know what I mean? It's fun. Um, so I just want everyone to know, look, I, I know it's tough during these current times to like wonder, hey, I wonder what that guy on stage, what his political beliefs are. And uh, I don't think it's even political. I just think the Ukraine are just being so brutal to the Russians. And I just want to let you guys all know that I support Putin in this. And if you guys want to help me, I'm trying to raise $16 million for their military efforts. Um, and I have a, uh, a GoFundMe. So families are you wacky, win! huh? Hey, you ruined it. I was, it was gonna, I was gonna get a laugh and I was gonna leave the stage. No, you didn't ruin it. Hey, honestly, everyone's been really mean to you. And I want to tell you right now. I like it. Stop. No woman likes it. I'm going to tell you right now that if you want me to put a ring on your finger, you best keep your mouth quiet. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, get out for Corey. Holy fucking shit. I won't come next week, I All right. So that was the uh, uh, infamous... I am a Nazi stand-up set that Alan was so interested in hearing. Um, this is what happens, by the way, when I'm left to my own devices. I uh, I willingly cancel myself. Um, kind of twice, actually, because if you think about that, HaHa ha set had some, you know, uh, questionable material as well in terms of a, <laughs> the racial implication of it. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what happens to me when I do stand-up and I get drunk and then I tell Alan that, I'm, that I did it and then... We're just, that's just where we're at. Okay, sweet. So that's the first half of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it hasn't been terrible. Um, I don't know. I, I've been having fun. Um, are you guys, just, I'll, I'll, let's just do this, actually. Um, can I just get a round of applause uh, if you're supporting the Ukraine? Okay, yeah, that was a good, pretty solid uh, round of applause there. Um, so did you guys see the news today with all the, uh, dead Ukrainians? I mean, you guys. I mean, truly, truly unbelievable. All right, all right, enough, enough. All right, we'll be back after this. I mean, come on, it's not funny. This is, there's a real war happening overseas. Open your fucking eyes. There's a real war. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the Minneapolis Clinic of Neurology. Do you have MS? Do you have an, an, some other degenerative neurological problem? Well, the Minneapolis Clinic of Neurology will be happy to diagnose you and also put you through a series of tests of which your insurance will only cover $2,154 that you'll have to pay out of your pocket in spite of the fact that that you don't have a lot of money and very few prospects. But they're awful friendly. The Minneapolis Clinic of Neurology. Come for the stuff. Leave with a big old check. Not a check, a bill. They don't give you checks. They don't give you a big check. Um, there are no big checks. Uh, except for those guys over in uh, Eastern Europe who are getting uh, murdered right now. And now time for the second half of the podcast. It's the Going Hard Podcast. Producer Pete, Alan, and John. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Oh, shit. Uh, how was... 
How was my break, Josh? Oh, you know, not bad. It was okay. Okay. Yeah, how about your break, jo uh, Josh? How was yours? Not bad. It was, uh, it was fine. Right. So there's a lot of... Uh, hey, did you hear about... Uh, how about that Will uh, that Will Smith? Uh, he uh, he slapped a guy. This is my impression of when Alan did the podcast on his own, by the way. So, uh, yeah, so Will, uh, you know, Will Smith, he uh, was on the stage at the Oscars, and he uh, heard a joke he didn't like, went up to Chris Rock, and he uh, he slapped him in the face. Uh, and I... Uh, and a lot of people, some people, uh, said that uh, Chris Rock, uh, the comedian who got slapped, had gone too far. And other people thought that, uh, you know, uh, free uh, that free speech uh, trumps all. Therefore, uh, Will Smith should not have uh, slapped uh, the comedian and Chris Rock on stage. Some people think it was good. Some, uh, some didn't th didn't like it. So, uh, what else? Uh, Elon Musk is uh, trying to uh, he's trying to buy Twitter. He bought. He's, he's uh, he made a big offer to uh, Twitter. And uh, some people think that uh, Twitter is being unconstitutional uh, by not uh, taking his uh, offer seriously and, you know, creating a bit of a monopoly. And other people think that free speech uh, trumps everything else, therefore... Elon Musk should be allowed to buy Twitter and make it a place where thoughts can be uh, transferred freely, uh, as was the right of all Americans when uh, when back when back in the revolutionary times they drafted uh, that document ensuring all the right to free speech. And, uh, you know, some people thought that, uh, they thought that maybe, uh, Britain, uh, the British should have actually won and conquered, uh, the colonies and, uh, made them part of their big empire. And other people, uh, believe that, uh, free speech trumps all and therefore it's good that the Americans who weren't known as Americans at the time necessarily, but that, uh, that the colonies actually were able to defeat the British with their pitchforks. So there's, uh, all right, so that's my impression of Alan doing, doing the podcast on his own. And you know what, by the way, I, I mean, we all, we all heard Alan do the podcast on his own and I would listen to a whole hour of that. Once again, I don't want him to get the wrong idea if he's listening to this saying that we're slandering him or anything, because that's not what we're here to do. We're here to, uh, make sure that he knows that he's missed. And, you know, I'm sure that that uh, vicious, vicious, you know, alligator attack that he suffered just hours ago um, is something that he can recover from. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's that funny because, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen an alligator attack, but it's pretty vicious. Now, the only thing that you can kind of say in favor of the alligators that he was definitely it wasn't like a fully grown alligator if you know what I mean uh, for whatever reason Alan uh, he tends towards like uh, like uh, the children uh, of the species I mean let's, let's just call it what it is Alan was trying to fuck a baby alligator <laughs> But uh, that's not that's not what we're here to talk about. So it's not. I, honestly, that wasn't really fair play on my part to be completely honest. Because I mean, I think that, um, you know, I think that Alan, he has he's just like everyone else. You know, he has his faults. He has his, 
He has his things that he's good at as well. Um, it just so happens that he's really good at fucking young things. <laughs> all right, all right. That, I think that bit's run its course. I, I'm not that it was a bit. I mean, you you guys just you need to stop laughing at everything. I mean, what are you guys like a bunch of hyenas or what? <laughs> I miss those guys, man. Okay, so you know what? This is this has been. I think this has been long enough. Um, what I what I what I learned here today is that even when you play 15 minutes of audio, all on your own with no one around trying to podcast, even with 15 of those minutes being accounted for through audio, it's very difficult. It's a lot better to look into Alan's, you know, dead autistic eyes. And then look over here and see producer Pete just placing bets, not giving a fuck about anything we're doing or saying. It's be- That's a better situation than just staring into the lights of a soundboard um, and just trying to let everybody know that you really love your friends, that you miss them. That's It's hard to keep that entertaining. I mean, here we are, 42-minute mark of the podcast. It won't, even, it won't even really be that long. I'm going to cut a bunch of this, I'm sure, especially you guys laughing at all that horrible shit. Thanks, by the way. You know, it's bad enough when I when I when I start, you know, a sentence just by saying something tragic, and then Alan will just start laughing. I mean, that's, I mean, that's bad enough. But then when, when we actually, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just, it's just really upsetting. Is all I have to say about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're gonna close this podcast out with another throwback, right? So usually we make a song. Alan's not here. You know, I could throw on some public domain beats and I could rap. And I could diss Alan like I want to do over public domain beats. I'm not going to do that this time, though. Um, I don't. I don't think that's appropriate. Instead, I did find a real throwback here. So this might actually be the first recorded any music that Alan and I ever made together. Now, of course, we've made 60 plus songs in this podcast, and then I mean dozens outside of the podcast as well throughout our lives. But this is with back. This looks like it was nine years ago. So when I was just a 21-year-old man, maybe not even 21, this is pre-Pittsburgh even. This is fucking forever ago, man. Um, so this this right here is a song that uh, Alan and then another friend of ours made way back when. And again, don't cancel us for it because uh, we didn't know any better, you know? Things were... Uh, Times were different nine years ago. Like, you could say stuff about Hitler. You know, you could uh, you could talk about a, a lady who owns a Thai restaurant in Pittsburgh in certain ways, and it'd be fine. If you guys don't believe me, go listen to Andrew Dice Clay and then compare that to what I've said today. I rest my case. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Going Hard Podcast. We'll be back next week in full strength, and I really... I couldn't possibly wait for that any with any more anticipation because I miss those guys and I love those guys. And most importantly, I love you too.